To me, this is one of the most beautiful of the Thoth tarot cards. It's the Queen of Discs. And the Queen of Discs uh, rules a 30-day period, roughly 30 days, 30-degree uh, period between December 13th and January 9th. So this is our gal right, right now. Uh, just to, as a reminder, I know I look uh, I look disheveled, but we just got back from the uh, from the store, and I haven't even had a sip of coffee. So if you will uh, if you will join me in a caffeine moment. Ah, uh, je chocolate. Chevalier. Anyway, today is December 30, uh, 21st. Uh, it's just a couple hours away from the official uh, winter solstice. And um, that is when the sun will be passing out of Sagittarius, or the art card, and passing into Capricorn, the devil. Now in, uh, that's the Thoth Tarot I'm holding up. Here's our Queen of Discs for from the Tarot Ceremonial Magic. And in order to uh, get in touch with her, there we've got a little collateral uh, information. She's the second N in Nanta on the Tablet of Union, Enochian Magic. She's the water off the Earth Tablet. And there is her hierarchy of uh, uh, specific spirits of Earth and water. And there is the Hindu Tattva symbol, which is the, the yellow square of Earth and the silver crescent of the moon. And of course, there's the dates and, uh, and everything. And it's, I, I know she's not as pretty as, as Thoth, uh, Thoth deck. And we're passing out of Sagittarius. This is sort of an alchemical. Now, alchemy folks know that, that this represents a, the, a stage in an alchemical operation. Uh, it's the coagula part of the formula solvay at coagula. So it's, it's pretty much a climactic uh, moment in an alchemical process and that's what we're going through right now uh, or it whatever it is you're going through right now could be viewed as that i i can't tell you what you're going through uh, and we're just getting ready to come into capricorn okay so I'm showing you all of that for uh, uh, just for a, a sort of background meditation to the fact that uh, this is one of the Thelemic holy days. Uh, there's uh, rituals of the elements and feasts of the time. And uh, this is one of the feasts of the of the time or at least most people is, assume that the equinoxes and solstices and cross quarters are uh, are uh, worthy of, of feasts and celebrations and observances constance and i are going out to dinner tonight with uh, uh at a friend's house and uh, they're cooking up a nice vegetarian meal for us and uh so we're going to be celebrating with friends and such. Uh, keeping also with uh, with uh, the fact that we're 
coming up on the end, really the the end of a of a of a year. And uh, usually we think of uh, January and and uh, such as uh, you know the the beginning of a new solar year and stuff. But uh, we're coming up on the end of 2023, and it's uh, I don't know about you, but it's been uh, uh, very uh, weird, difficult, frightening, uh, monstrous, catastrophic, you name it. You, you can't really uh, turn on anybody's news and get cheered up too much. Uh, there are three small cards, small cards, the twos through nines of each uh, of each suit uh, represent 10 degree periods of the zodiac. So th there are three small cards that live inside that uh, that uh, queen of uh, queen of discs. OK. And. The very. This is I know it's wands, but uh, the court cards have a adopted Deccan program. Here is today's card. OK, this card, its influence or its meaning or its significance ends today. The Ten of Wands, Saturn in Sagittarius. It's called oppression. Crowley's version of it looks like this. And mine is meant to look like prison bars that are on fire and actually starting to come apart. Now, wands are the are the yod of yod -Heh vav -Heh, Okay, that it's the fire. It's the father. It's the uh, it's the highest tree of life of four trees of life. OK. Uh, it's the creative deity. OK, so you would you would think oh, all the wands are really cool. There's a two of wands dominion and a three of wands, uh, you know, virtue and uh, wands would all seem like the cat's meow. OK. But the ten of wands is all the way down at the bottom of the tree of life. And the wand and the yod of yod -Heh vav -Heh is so singular, is so self-evident that it almost can't think of a world other than its own wand world. And by the time its influence comes down that lightning flash on the tree of life and hits number 10, number 10 can't stand the thought of losing itself. I can't lose my oneness. I can't lose my yodness. I can't imagine a universe. I can't imagine a lower frequency of consciousness. I got to hold on to it with my claw grip thing. That is our Ten of Wands, and that is today. Tomorrow, if the Ten of Wands can just release its grip on its self centered self. we begin harmonious change. It's the next card in the deck. We go into zero degree Capricorn. Okay. And then that's why we have, you know, that's why we go. Next card goes into the devil. But back to our story of coming down the tree of life. 
uh, if we uh, uh, ignore for the moment the, the, the yearly story that's being told uh, about going from Sagittarius into, into Capricorn and just go back to that idea of the Ten of Wands not wanting to give up what it thinks is the totality of everything. The next card in the in the series, not the next card in the yearly series, but the next card in the series would be the Ace of Cups. Okay, just look at it this way. Here's the world of wands. There's ten wands, Ace of Wands up there, okay, and the Ten of Wands down there. The next suit, the hay in yod hay vav hay, the first hay in yod hay vav hay, is a suit of cups or water or the mother. But the ten can't picture that. The ten in its self-centeredness can't imagine that if it would just let go, it would drip down into a second tree of life of cups of water and the ace of cups if the ten of wands could just let go for a second it would drip and fill the holy grail itself as the ace of cups and then we go into the that's my little demonstration okay <laughs> of that Okay, we would drip into the Ace of Cups. But back on our yearly tale, this is what we're going into. So if you feel, you know, you always, uh, on New Year's Eve, out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, today's really the day that that happened. Today, you can actually manifest some harmonious change. Okay, but you've got to get through this. Okay, so start a... you got to... And all you have... Yeah, I guess you just have to wait it out, but you have to get in touch with what is happening from the shift from this to this and sort of get ready for it. Because this is a very happy card and usually you're happy to, happy to see it. And this card will take us right up to uh, uh, New Year's Eve. Or New Year's Eve Eve. And the cup and the, the card that follows that means you have to then start to get to work on it. Okay, I'm going to read what Crowley has to say about uh, uh, the Queen of Discs. Let's get her out here again. Now, if you're Enochian people, if you come from the planet of Nokia, uh, you could uh, actually ceremonially get yourself geared up with uh, the 5th and 14th Enochian call uh, to sort of get you buzzing to, to vibrate with the universe of uh, uh, the Queen of Discs. But we're not going to do that uh, this morning. I'm just going to read what Crowley says in the Book of Thoth about this lady right here. I just love her dress. I just want to sort of rub my hands. So, oh, well, anyway. Queen of Discs represents the watery part of Earth. The function of that element as mother. She rules from the 21st degree of Sagittarius to the 20th degree of Capricorn. She represents passivity, usually 
in its highest aspect. The queen of discs is thrown upon the life of vegetation. She contemplates the background where a calm river winds through a sandy desert to bring it fertility. Oases are beginning to shoo them uh, shoo themselves amid the wastes. See the oasis is uh, springing up there. Before her stands a goat upon a sphere. There is here a reference to the dogma of the great work, that the dogma of the great work is fertility. Her armor is composed of small scales or coins. And her helmet is adorned with the great spiral horns of a markhor. That's an M-A-R-K-H-O-R. -R. In her right hand, she bears a scepter surmounted by a cube, within which is a three-dimensional hexagon excuse me, hexagram. Now, I, I hope you can see that better than I can. But. And in her left arm is curved her proper disc, a sphere of loops and circles interlaced. She thus represents the ambition of matter to take part in the great work of creation. Matter, see, discs, okay. Persons signified by this card possess the finest of the quieter qualities. They are ambitious, but only in useful directions. They press immense funds, excuse me, they possess immense funds of affection kindness and greatness of heart wow are you a queen of are you a queen of discs can i borrow some money <laughs> okay excuse me they possess immense funds of affection kindness and greatness of heart they are not intellectual and not particularly intelligent thank you crowley that's going to help with that loan isn't it okay but instinct and intuition are more than adequate for their needs. These people are quiet, hard-working, practical, sensible, domesticated, often in a reticent and unassuming fashion. Lustful, even debauched. All right. The mind boggles, especially in that hot dress. Yay. Okay. They are inclined to abuse to the abuse of alcohol or drugs. It is as if they could only realize their essential happiness by getting outside themselves. If ill-dignified, oh God, if ill-dignified, they're dull, servile, foolish. They are drudges rather than workers. That's if they're ill-dignified. Of course, nobody's ill-dignified. Uh, life for them is purely mechanical, and they cannot rise or even seek to rise above their appointed lot. In the Yi Ching, the watery part of earth is represented by the 31st hexagram, Hsin, I'm not sure how that's really pronounced, uh, and it has the meaning influence. Okay, uh, the, the commentary describes the effect of moving various parts of the bodies, from the toes to the jaws to the tongue. This is rather an amplification of what has been said uh, than an exact correspondence, yet there is no discordance. The general advice is to go forward quietly without overt attack upon existing situations. And uh, in my own Yi Ching of my low, uh, I've got uh, that summarized as uh, uh, influence or wooing. It's wooing is uh, another name for the 31st hexagram. Mutual attraction, courtship, not seduction. The man is on his knees, but the woman 
is in control. Be happy to give people your advice, but don't act like a know-it-all. That's my little take on the thing. Anyway, that's kind of some some food for thought for you on uh, on this day. I I hope you are going to give yourself permission to start your true holiday festivities right now, today, and do what you can to break yourself free from that that imaginary prison of your of your uh, where is he uh, of your ten of wands get yourself the hell out of that today and start early on this harmonious change which will start tomorrow. But let's see how we all feel in the morning. Until then, continue to be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love and her will.